welcome to the Jeremy Hill Show. If you're easily triggered, leave now because this is not the show for you. Now, what I'm going to bring to you today in this reaction video is a black lady who thinks she is the queen of all black feminists. And this woman is really articulate, to be honest with you. But you can tell she's educated, if you want to call her that. But even though she sounds extremely articulate and educated, she still comes across, in my most humble opinion, as a moronic imbecile, aka a musty back helper. She's gonna take a long time to take a dump on the men. So let's go ahead and get into this, man. And it's she's gonna talk so much, it's gonna seem like she never took a breath in between words like blah, blah, blah. So let's let's go ahead and get it. One second, I'll put on the screen, y'all. Give me a moment as I do. There we go. Let's get it. It's remarkable to me that feminism is so despised. Black feminists are expected to spend our lives battling misinformation. We are supposed to be apologetic for something that has not only done enormous good for black communities, but that is literally changing the world. Because black feminism has done great things for the black community, and it has also changed the world. This is what this woman says. This woman is delusional. And we haven't gotten into 17 seconds of the video yet, but this is what she believes. Let's keep going. The black men, please see that we love you posture is really corny to me right now. Let's just run down the facts. Feminism belongs to black women as much as it does any other group. I don't know why folks think that black feminists are stupid. We recognize that our lives and our work differ significantly from white women. That's why we created something that speaks directly to our needs. Black women in the United States have been organizing around progressive gender politics for 200 years. Each generation picks up where the last left off. Within the black- Each generation picks up where the last left off. In other words, each generation of black women becomes more stubborn, more rebellious, and more quote unquote independent. They regurgitate the phrases of, I don't need no man, I'm better off single. Each generation becomes worse and worse and worse. And she's told you that the whole position of I need a black man, I love black men, I want to help black men, and I'm paraphrasing, but that is the gist of what she said. She said that is corny to her. It's absurd to her. So that lets you know that at the root of feminism, there is a strong disdain for black men, especially when it comes to black feminists. Now, black feminists are different from white feminists. I had did a video where I had a lady who actually coined feminism, who took it to a different level, and I can't remember her name at this time. You have to go through my videos. But she said that the black woman, the black women have taken over the feminist movement. A white feminist and a black feminist are different. A white feminist will treat their men with respect, and most white feminists are married. They just think that there are certain things that they shouldn't put up with, and they but they still will get married. They are not disrespectful to their men. We can have a black feminist. If anyone is foolish enough to marry one, she still won't be happy. Black feminists love to cause division. And they love to justify any irrational action that they can come up with as long as they can justify it in their own minds. Their outlooks on life is divisive. They really believe that they are as strong, if not stronger, than a man. Even, you think I'm just talking about mentally. Not even that. There are women who think because they can box, they are, in, they are boxers or whatever you want to say, and certain forms of entertainment and sports, they still think that they can outperform men in boxing or basketball. This is how sick and strange and evil the feminist mindset is. It will cause a woman to be delusional and women will always remain delusional until they are in a situation where they need a man to protect them or to provide for them if you take away the things the rights that men gave them all these rights that they're talking about men gave permission for them to have they protested they walked they made allegiances with other people but at the end of the day those rights did not come along without the consent of men 
And if men wanted to, if men had a change of heart and said things like, we're taking these rights back and you can't have them back. There is absolutely nothing women can do. They can yell, they can scream, they can protest. But if all the men, and this is hypothetical, if all the men came together and said, look, we're tired of this. We're tired of no fault divorce that was started with Ronald Reagan. We're tired of having to be drugged through the child support system. We're tired of being drugged through the divorce courts and stuff, and they're taking half of our stuff. We're tired of all this. We're tired of all the sassiness and the, the rebellious and the disrespect that come out the lips of these women. It's take it back. There's absolutely nothing that women can do because of the power imbalance. There is a power imbalance between men and women. Men are the conquerors. Women are not. Women are the ones who stay home and prepare meals and take care of children while the men go out and conquer. We have allowed, and I underline, underline the word allow, we have allowed you women to progress. You did not get to where you are today by your own free will. We, the men, we, the ones who you despise, we, the ones you always put down, we, the ones that you want to be a subservient to you, gave you that avenue for you to move through. Let's keep going. Black community. Black feminists have been battling what sociologist LaRue Lewis calls Black male privilege. Black male privilege operates as a system of built-in and often overlooked systematic advantages that center the experience and the concerns of Black males while minimizing the power that Black males hold. So no, Black men don't have the power that white men have. But within Black communities, there is a pecking order, and Black men are at the top. Furthermore, Black men often collude with patriarchy in order to maintain their dominance. And I'm genuinely confused about why we have to spend so much time discussing something that is so apparent. All that arguing about stuff that is completely obvious diverts our attention away from the work that Black feminism does and has done. Instead of trying to corner Black feminists with false claims, y'all need to be thanking us. Because centering Black... What is the work? that black feminists or black feminism have brought to the black community other than the destruction of the nuclear family. All this stuff about, I can do what I want when I want to do it. You're running around here with the highest rates of obesity. You're running around with the highest rates of STDs. You're running around here with the highest rates of having children outside of wedlock, okay? What has feminism actually done that is positive in the black community? All y'all got through feminism is the opportunity to open your mouth without someone punching you dead in it. That's really what this comes down to. All you, all feminism has done is open the door for women to be disrespectful, to gain achievements, and then once they get their achievements, they want to pretend that they are masculine because they are doing things like men, so therefore they have the right to stand up to a man like a man and then put down a man. Women, I'm going to tell you something, black feminists, are just jealous individuals. A black feminist is a person who is jealous of the natural ability of a man. A man's natural ability to lead. A man's natural ability to command respect. A man's natural ability to protect and provide and to shape a society to, if you will, create a world, to create rules and policies. A black feminist, if I'm wrong, then why are the things that I've just mentioned are the very things that black feminists fight for? They are the very things that black feminists want. Those are the various, those are the very spaces that black feminists try to intrude into so they can put in that two cents. Black feminists are jealous of men. I said it. And that's what the problem is women's lives and work didn't create a selfish movement or system of beliefs. Black women theorizing and working from their experiences enabled them to create a framework of knowledge that is incredibly inclusive. We all owe the OG Black feminists so much for taking the time to work through the complexities of our relationship to empire. They taught us that it's not just race or class or gender. It's race, class, gender, ability, sexuality, and more all at the same time. And that means that we all have to be in the fight. In 1970, Black feminist activist Frances Beale wrote, it becomes essential 
for those who understand the workings of capitalism and imperialism to realize that the exploitation of black people and women works to everyone's disadvantage. It's black feminists who most clearly articulated that all systems of oppression are linked. Bell Hooks named it white supremacist capitalist patriarchy. Patricia Hill Collins calls it the matrix of domination. And you've probably heard the term intersectionality. Kimberly Crenshaw coined it in 1989. It's meant to highlight how experiencing multiple oppressions can actually render you invisible within oppressive systems. And what's most frustrating is that within Black communities, Black women get scapegoated for these interlocking systems of oppression. For example, racism and economic exploitation are the reasons why Black men don't have access to the economic opportunities that might allow them to fulfill traditional roles of masculinity. So Black women have to step in as primary caretakers and financial providers and protectors and etc. And we do that... Did you just hear this shit? Did you just hear this shit? Women have to step in now because of systemic racism. That's that's what it is. Y'all keep complaining about systemic racism. It's still here. My question is for you is, has systemic racism prevented you from getting a marriage, a wedding ring? You can say all the shit you want. Talk all that good old shit you want to talk. But at the end of the day, ain't nobody picking your ass and shit. And it's because of what you just said. Because of how you think. It's everything being put on the black man. It's the black man's fault. And then we got the, it's the black man's fault. The white man is superior to the black man. So y'all had to come in and save us and rescue us. Get the hell out of here. Anyway, I might do a part two to that eventually. But I just want to put that out there because it's a very long video. I might keep it and do a part two or three to that because she said so much bullshit. It's amazing. So anyway. Oh, yeah. Also, um. I'm going to repost an old video. I took it down. I took one of my videos down because I'm going to put it on my Patreon account. Uh, I'm going to re-upload it. So if you see it today, I want you to think, oh, he just, he just, we just saw that. Some of you probably never seen it. I got new subscribers. But show your support. Go to it. Like it. You know what I mean? Subscribe to it. Uh, leave a comment for it. It's going to be about that lady. Um, I got to find it. Um, who lit up? A youngster clap her cheeks. A minor. Okay, so I'm going to pull that back up there today. And then I might still put that on Patreon. My Patreon, I'm waiting until I get about 30,000 subscribers before I open up my Patreon. But I'm already setting things aside to do Patreon. So I'll probably be on doing maybe one video a week there. I don't even know how I'm going to do there because I'm still trying to do videos here on YouTube. So I might split things up, maybe two here, then two there. I haven't really decided on the number or the frequency of videos yet. But I'm going to be opening um, that Patreon when I hit 30,000 subscribers. Okay. I had to make a decision of the number because I've been talking about it, but I said, man, I don't know if I want to do it yet. So, absolutely, when I get 30K, I'll be opening up that Patreon. And the Mustard Back Helper shirts are still working. I've been told told y'all about it. Um, I think you see the light is different here on the video because I bought a whole lot of different equipment. Um, I failed to order everything. Cause I got a Rodecaster Pro 2. But I got to get certain um, monitor speakers for that. And I'm using one I got. They don't work for that. So I got to get some monitor speakers. I got I got the Shure mic. Uh, what is that thing called? Uh, the SM7B or something like that. I got that. So in time, when I get all that stuff, I'm very particular about what I'm going to get. And I'll still be opening up my music studio as well. So I'm doing a whole lot of things. You know what I mean? Support your boy and stuff like that. I greatly appreciate it. And you're going to love the Mustard Back Helper shirts. I'm going to tell you that right now. And for those of you who want to take that idea, you can because I trademarked it already. I already provided that proof on one of my live streams. So if you try to take anything, I don't care if you say Musty Goose. Anything that brings confusion or sounds like it's um, close to anything that I've just trademarked, I can sue you, take all your money. Or I can license it. I can, I can license it to you if you want to use it. Okay? MBH, Mustard Back Helper, belongs to the Jeremy Hill Show. Okay? But y'all gonna love the shirts, man, because um, I don't want to have nothing basic, because I'm not a basic dude. It's gonna be designed out, man. You're gonna want to go to the gym and this shit. You're gonna want to have a woman next to you on the couch, and she rubbing on your chest, and when she rubbing her chest, her fingers are going across the words, must it back help, but don't date them bitches. You know what I'm trying to say here. Anyway, oh yeah, and I'm trying to figure out how I can make some um, underwear for the women, like some panties, like a thong. And on the front of it, it's going to say some shit funny like, this don't smell like no mustard back help. Who knows? You know what? Whoever knows. Who knows? Maybe I make something about mustard back help eating booty. Who knows? 
You know, ain't nothing, anything can happen on the Jeremy Hill show. Anything can happen. Shit. The sky's the limit. For some of you, the limit's the sky. <laughs> I'm fucking with you. All right, then. Uh, I'll talk to y'all later. You let me know what you think about this. I'm going to go ahead and upload the other video I told you that I've done before. And I'll be talking to y'all pretty soon. Y'all be safe out there now. You hear? <laughs>